What's up guys, it's Dan at yourpbfriend.com. Today we have the new Cyborg 6 from MacDev. I may be mistaken, but I think we're one of the very first stores to get the Cyborgs in. It shipped yesterday, and because we were only a few hours away from MacDev USA, we got a beautiful present in today. And so here we do, the Cyborg 6. We have some um, review videos we're gonna do on it. We felt like it was our responsibility to get it to you as soon as possible. So the map on these things is $1,500, long-awaited Cyborg. Comes in multiple colors, a beautiful red, black, an all silver, green, teal, gold, uh, gray and blue, and a Superman color. This uh, one right here is going to be my beautiful baby, and I get to use it at a tournament tomorrow, and I'm really excited. So let's open it up and do an unboxing video first, and then we're going to do a shooting video, an efficiency video, a comparison video, some other things, and then do a full breakdown for, for you. So let's see what's inside this thing. Beautiful MacDev cases, zipper, hold their form well. You flip it open, it comes with a new shaft two barrel kit. Um, you know, beautiful front, nice rubber grip on there so you can take the barrel off while at the field or um, while playing on the field, even when your hands are slippery and it's more comfortable. Comes with two inserts, a 685 and a 693. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. It also has a room for your other, you know, um, other barrel inserts when you wanna buy them. So that's a real nice feature. Of course, you get your Militia Lube. MacDev always does a good job providing some of the coolest stickers in paintball. There you go. MacDev Militia stickers. You get a couple extra bolt tips, an O-ring kit with an O-ring chart, some detents. A manual. The manual is very thin, but it is a uh, full color manual. That's real nice. Everything you need to do there. They also have Allen keys, a nice Allen key set right here. And it has a little pouch um, in here, which if you know with the other clones and drones and droids, I believe the Allen keys would just fall out every time you open the gun, not with this. And before I keep rambling on, let's actually show you the beautiful gun. So. This is my Cyborg 6, serial number 14, which uh, 14, which is pretty cool. You have new to this gun is you have the LPR instead of being out in the front, they've moved the LPR into the um, foregrip right here. So this is the LPR, nothing to get in your way when you're holding the gun. The HPR or high pressure regulator is right here in the grip. You can see there's an Allen key hole right here. Um, Another big feature on this gun is it's dual transducers, which means that it has an electronic gauge for both the LPR and the HPR, and you can read that on the board. So there's no more guesswork on tuning the marker if it's uh, balanced properly because it is a balanced poppet valve system. There's no more of that. It also has a sleeved ram um, inside there with a very easy to take off back cap, which is really nice. A big thing that they did is this uh, feed neck has been redesigned. The clone GT and GTI feed neck, people would have problems with those breaking or falling off. This thing has been beefed up and it looks pretty strong. Um, that's impressive. People are asking how it feels in the hands. I think the gun feels really good in the hands. Um, I don't have an LV-1 here to compare with me, but it doesn't seem quite as long as the LV-1. I like the foregrip a little better than the LV1s. The LV1s kind of slants. This one is uh, very flat up and down. It's also really nice that uh, if you see right here, if you want to hold your gun with your thumb, a lot of people do that. It's very comfortable right here. There's some rubber. It's just made to fit your hand perfectly. That's one thing MacDev has done well for a long time. The foregrips feel phenomenal. The frame feels good. Um, it doesn't seem much fatter. Some people are afraid because the HPR is in here. It doesn't really seem much fatter. It still feels really good in the hands. Um, you get a solid grip right here. Um, the trigger frame right here is still a little bit, uh, it's not sharp, but it is a pretty rigid edge. Um, some snake players are having problems when diving on the previous models of the clones and MacDev guns, um, gouging their hands on this edge. Um, 
I don't know how bad of a problem that's going to be or if it is because the frame is a little longer and slanted down more, but that may be something to watch out for. It's a very simple fix. People just put a little bit of tape right there and you're good to go. Never have a problem again. Um, but yep, here's the screen. It's the new uh, screen that they had. It's just beautiful. Um, the grips are white. They're going to release color grip kits eventually for them. I'm not sure, I have no news on when they're gonna come out or not, but they're gonna release some colored grip kits so you can pretty much customize the grips on the gun. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take this thing apart for you and let's uh, show you how simple and awesome the MacDev uh, Cyborg 6 is. Okay guys, right now we're gonna do the tech video on the new Cyborg 6 and take it all apart. Um, we're going to start with the easiest part, the RAM housing in the rammer. It's real easy. You want to pop open your pin like that, pull your bolt out, and then you see this, it's just the back cap is hand tight. It's really nice. One of the cool features of this gun is you literally just pull it out, and out comes your, um, your whole sleeve, your RAM housing sleeve. Um, there is a spring in here for your cup seal or your poppet here's the cup seal with the poppet um, you unscrew it right here and this is how you get into your rammer there you go so with the rammer all you need to do in lubing these um, I like to use q-tips you can take q-tips and um, stick it on the inside and just clean it all off according to the manual what you do is you just take some of the militia lube you uh, lube right around here you move the shaft with the with it clean out the rammer housing right here and the lube on this will go ahead and fill inside there this is pretty liberally lubed so you don't really need to be very sparing um, with the lube you can put a decent amount on there this o-ring just works as a bumper that you see floating around this o-ring works as a bumper right here and sits just like that in between these two halves so then you can go ahead and screw them back together until it's tight you can put your cup seal you don't need to put anything on the cup seal no oil or anything it's Delrin it does make Delrin swell you can go push that right there as you see that's a very light seal um, that's what makes this gun so darn smooth so you just take this whole system you stick it back in um, I don't know if you can tell there's really nothing inside inside there at all so you just stick the whole system back in there is a little pin on this back part right here. You just line up with the back, push it in, and then you're good to go. You can screw it back in. You can do that. Um, everybody says a little bit differently. Um, if you break a lot of paint or get a lot of dirt, go ahead and clean that out. Otherwise, I do that every uh, you know couple times of play or five or six cases or something like that relube the rammer. Um, doing it more isn't going to hurt it and actually is very good. Um, poppets tend to be pretty resilient, but it's nice to lube those. Also go ahead and take a little bit of the militia lube and put it on the outside of the bolt itself. You don't need to cake it on these o-rings. They're not holding pressure in them. They are um, mainly just sitting there and directing air through the bolt face. Um, so you don't want to over lube that or grease that. Otherwise, it gets all into the breech and causes, causes squirrely balls. Um, if you notice, one thing I noticed is the bolt pin is super uh, small and thin. I guess they're just making a statement that it doesn't need a heavy bolt pin. But you just go clip that right in. And then there you go. It's hooked up. Um, the feed neck, I'm not going to take off the feed neck, but the feed neck is redesigned to be much stronger and more resilient and not break, which is really cool. Um, on the Cyborg 6 right here, you have now, this is where, where your LPR is. The LPR comes out of the bottom. Your HPR is right here in the grip. So we're going to start by taking apart your LPR right now. They say in the manual to take apart your L LPR every uh, um, 10 K or clean it in your HPR and LPR every 10 cases or so every 20,000 shots. You're going to start by taking the biggest Allen key on your set, which is a quarter inch. This is the LPR, uh, pretty much like the LPR back cap 
um, or sorry, cap that holds it in. There you go. So that pops right out. And then your internals. Oop, there goes the spring. You can sit right in there. You got a piston. So, dirty needle nose pliers with duct tape on them. Pull out the LPR piston. So this is what your LPR looks like. You know, pretty simple. I'll show you that in the manual as well. Just so you can follow along to do exactly what they say. This is how they come, come apart. You just pull it all the way down to the LPR assembly. If you notice right here, you can take all these parts, um, all this apart, uh, all the way down to the cup seal and everything, um, or the reg seat, sorry. But you don't need to all the time. They said in the manual, don't really take it apart. What you do is you want to wipe it down, relube these two O-rings right here and here. This thing's a filter. So these two O-rings, then you're going to put a little bit on this piston right here, and then you're gonna put it on the piston shaft. Then when you're done with that, you put it back together. And they said it is literally that easy to take apart. You just um, take it apart, lube those things, and you put it back together, and you are good to go. So we're gonna put that back in. You know, just take the quarter inch Allen key. Screw it back together. You just serviced your LPR. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the um, HPR assembly. In order to do this, you need to take off the grips. You know, pull those things off right here. The grips on this gun are really nice. It's a softer rubber than they were before with the previous, uh, when they came out with the GTI grips for the clone. Um, they feel really good in the hands and they're a little bit softer so they just feel fantastic. Pull off both sides. You really only need to pull off one side when lubing it, but because for this video we're going to open it all up, we're going to take apart both sides for you. Alrighty. So this is your HPR just right there. We're going to take the same, I believe, quarter inch Allen key. Fits right in there. Can I unscrew it? There you go. That's the reg seat. Let's see if it comes right out. And there you go. So this is the HPR. This is all that there is. There's this little filter on it, which is nice. I really like that MacDev stuck a filter in both the HPR and the LPR. That is really cool. Um, you know, not all fields, actually many of them don't reg or clean and filter their air. So you get a lot of dirty air, which gets into your gun and you're annoyed and causes problems. They just did a great job by doing that. Um, props to them. But so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take it apart. You're going to lube this O-ring right here. Lube the inside of the piston O-ring. Lube the piston and the piston shaft with some Militia lube. You're going to get it. This is brand new. As so if you can see, there's just remnants of a little bit of lube. You don't need to cake it on there. Um, but go ahead and put it on there. Um, liberally enough and then this literally goes back together this way and this piece will sit and screw into here that's your HPR assembly very simple inside the gun there is nothing as you can see so this just slides right back in like so and you screw it on 
to adjust your velocity, there's a smaller uh, Allen key slot and you just screw that, oh sorry, there's a smaller Allen key slot on the inside, you can just use that to screw that back and, back and on. Um, but yeah, see maintaining your HPR is super easy. Um, your ASA body is just real simple with the pin, you can pull it out, there's one little O-ring inside there, we're not going to pull that out for you, it's uh, super easy to do. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to take off your eye covers and take a look at the eyes and detent system for you. Oh, wrong side. Righty. So, pull off the eye covers. They're very simple, very familiar eye system. Works really good. How the wires connect. Here's your detents, the same style detents that they've had. The little nubs. These things uh, work really good as well. Just put them back in there. The eyes clip into spot. There's plenty of room for the eyes to fit where they belong. So you're not going to be breaking or pinching your eye wires. Screwed on and fit very well. Let's take apart the frame. There's a second. So this is an amazing part that I've been wanting to get through of the gun. Check this out, guys. I didn't unplug any wires. There you go. That's the top half. Here's your bottom half. The pins just kind of clip in right here. They clip into the board just kind of like the Axe and Mini does. The pins look very strong and sturdy. They're not going to be moving around from you, so you're not going to wrestle to get it in. Um, you have the little speaker and the other wires right in there, your trigger assembly. you got an O-ring for the transfer, O-ring for the air right there. Um, and then you got the top half of the gun, and this is where your solenoid is. Your solenoid plugs right into the board. Your eyes plug right into the board. So you literally have nothing. No more, nothing to unplug. No more breaking uh, solenoid wires or eye wires, ripping them out because you did it by accident. You literally, um, actually what I just noticed is if you look, the pins don't actually plug into anything. When it's screwed onto, it just hits the, um, they just connect and uh, make contact. And then when they make contact, you're good to go. That is a, uh, that's fantastic. That's a very, uh, you know, dummy proof. You can treat it like a paintball gun and it'll still work together well. So that's really cool. This is the sub plate. You don't really need to take that off. Um, there's a lot of electronics in MacDev's guns. You don't need to do a lot pulling them out, messing with them. Um, it's not advised that you do. You have the um, 9 volt battery right here. They redid the screens. Um, they redid them with the GTI so that you're not gonna have problems like the original GT screen and have the screens going out. If you look, they just look beautiful. Um, you can go turn it on, turn it off, or the eyes on and off. You hold down the trigger, turn it on to go into the menu. You can move through the settings, preferences, system, profile. Let's go through some of them real quick. Do system. So that's up and down. Total shots, we just did an efficiency test on it. So 2,237 shots we put through it so far. Zero pressure through it. So that's really nice. It's supposed to tell you the different pressures on the, on the board go back it's really easy to operate board um, turn it off so putting it back together is going to be easy let's uh, take apart this foregrip actually haven't done that yet 
set the frame over here. In just one moment, we're going to grab a scale and we're going to uh, weigh the gun for you so that you can see how uh, heavy it is. Let's see how this thing comes off. There's two screws right here. It comes with a screwdriver, which is awesome. So the screwdriver, they're all kind of a brand new set of Allen keys, a little stuck. Put this right there. So yeah, this little uh, accent plate, um, one of the colors I love, but this little accent plate just is done so nicely. It's so smooth. The grips, um, well, I guess this sits over the grips, but the grips just, uh, they feel so good in your hands, like they're meant to be there. It's not like just grips sitting on top of something, like a lot of guns are. These ones are actually molded for each other and just work really well. Oh, there you go. You pull that off. That's the grip. It's separating right here. Let's see if I can pull it off for us. So I literally just pulled this thing off. Um, this is the front grip. I'm not sure how to get this piece off or if, oh, no, I do know how. It, when you pull out this for the LPR, um, there's a screw on the inside, which I saw, which screws on. So it has two screws, which holds it on. It has one right here and one inside. There's really no reason you need to. Um, I do really like if you see this is um, fitted for a wrench so that you can if for some reason for some very awful reason you over tighten this and stripped out this um, HP or LPR uh, um, cap you can actually take a wrench right there and tighten it down that is really nice for people who mess things up all right so to put the frame back on it's super easy all you do is you stick the back of the frame in push it forward Drop your two screws in. Because the um, because the connectors are at the front of the gun right near where the screw is, it's going to make a perfect connection. All you gotta do is um, hand tighten the frame screw, just like this. You don't over tighten them, guys. Just, you know, hand tighten them. You'll be good to go. And there you go. So, Let's put it over a scale and see how light this gun is. Um, I can tell you it's not a super light gun, not one of the lightest ones on the market. Um, it's not as heavy as a DM-13 or 14, I'd imagine, but we're going to find out that right now. Zeroed it out. Let's take it. We're going to stick it with the barrel and an insert. So stick an insert in. Let's see what it weighs. 2 pounds, 4.1 ounces. In conclusion, guys, the MacDev Cyborg 6, I really like it. I'm going to use this gun for a tournament tomorrow myself to see, uh, well, to enjoy it a little more and see how it works. It's a beefy gun. It's not super light, but it feels fantastic in the hands. I think this probably feels... Um, one of the best feeling guns ergonomically in the hands out there. It's just really nice whether you hold your gun down here or up above. Um, they did a great job with the grips molded for your hands. The new uh, Shift 2 barrel kit is really nice. It comes with two inserts um, with a nice control bore length and a very good finish on the barrel. The barrel also has some great porting on it. The rubber um, grip right here is real nice for you to be able to take it on and off while playing. It also feels real cool. Um, the fact that they redid the feed neck here and beefed that up is a huge plus in my books. They saw a weakness on a fabulous uh, gun and they fixed it and brought it onto the Cyborg 6. Being able to maintain the gun so quickly, you just you know unscrew the back cap and pull out the valve and rammer that's really nice there's nothing in here to go wrong the bolts very simple 
Um, we looked at the LPR and the HPR. Both of them are super easy to um, access, to clean. They're very simple, simple parts in there. Pull them right out. Very refined on both of those. It's got a great trigger on it, can't complain. Um, I don't believe the gun bleeds the air out of the system. That is, some guns don't do that, and it's kind of a bummer. I really appreciate guns that do. But, you know, what can you say? The grips feel phenomenal. These just feel really good um, in the hands, so that's a huge plus. The gun, the trigger frame, I mentioned that some people had problems with the GTI frames being able to cut you. I don't think this is going to be a problem as it seems to be a little bigger, um, but you may experience that for players who dive. But what I mean exactly is some players were complaining that their fingers would hit right here when it's sharp and kind of get cut when they dove. Um, you can wrap some tape around there to fix that. The board is really nice on the gun. It's got a nice bright screen. It's a new one that's not going to have a lot of problems. It's the one they use for the GTI. The programming's very simple on the gun. It has the dual transducers, which is a huge plus. As long as they work, we're gonna have to test them out more to see how they go. But as long as they um, are very accurate and do a good job, you're gonna have no guesswork in tuning the marker. All you simply do is look at the board, the pressure, adjust um, accordingly, and you will be good to go. Um, so that that's, that's really cool as well. Um, it shot really smooth and really quiet. It very similar to the LV1. It's going to compete right there with it, I believe, as far as shot quality. Um, I know a lot of people are asking, why would I buy this over an LV1? Well, I think some of the advantages on this gun are the beautiful electronics, how simple it is to tune it with the board and the LPRs, how easy they are to work. It feels a little different in the hands. It feels really good. I think this probably feels better than the LV-1. Comes with a nice barrel kit with the uh, two inserts. Just really easy to work on. This gun is very refined. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's a $1,500 paintball gun. Um, but they put everything in it as a $1,500 paint, paintball gun. There's nothing really lacking in, everywhere from the box that comes with all the, the manual, color manuals, tools, lube, um, spare parts, everything you need, beautiful case, to the gun with a nice barrel with um, you know two different bore sizes. Just everything's put together really nicely. So I think this this gun is a real big contender. One thing I did notice looking on the body, I'm not sure if they forged the bodies or um, milled them, but I noticed underneath the ammo there were a few small scratch lines. Um, the ammo is beautiful on the gun. The milling or the body, I definitely see a little bit of marks, tool marks underneath. Um, for me personally, that's not a big deal, but there are some players of, or some of you guys out there which that may drive you nuts. Um, I looked at some of the other ones that came in too. Most of them had some of that, some not so noticeable at all. Um, this one is serial number 14, so maybe it was towards the beginning of the production run. But all in all, I wanna say this gun's a very solid contender. It's gonna be a blast to shoot. Shooting it today was fantastic. And uh, shooting at this tournament, we're going to see it is a poppet. You are going to have the same kind of drop shot on it that is due to airflow. It's um, all poppets, stack two poppets are going to be that way. The air comes through the valve, goes up through the bolt, moves forward. That makes air um, move over its each, each other. You're going to see the efficiency video. We did break a few balls in that efficiency video. Uh, it was my fault. I bored it at a 685 bore. And uh, this Vulcan Redemption that we have here is pretty tight in a 691 and uh, sometimes really tight. So I definitely underboard it. Um, and that's where we got a few barrel breaks, but we still got 11 and a quarter pods off a of 6845 shooting 285, 290 on PSP ramping nonstop. So that's a, that's, that's pretty fair efficiency. It's not the best efficiency on the market. Um, but it, it, is, it gets the job done. It's really good efficiency um, for what it is. So, yep, the new Cyborg 6. You can buy them right now at yourpbfriend.com. Um, if you have any questions or would like to see any more comparisons, we will get that out. I apologize. I did want to do a comparison with it versus um, the LV1 head-to-head. -head. 
and I sold all our LV ones this week. So um, <laughs> I will get one of those in. We'll do an efficiency side by side and do some shootings. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment in the section if you want to see any other videos or what your thoughts are, and we'll try to get back to you. Thanks, guys.